and we need to shut this up real quick. Alrighty. Hello, Gavin Isaacs. Welcome to the channel. And this Friday evening. I bet you don't have anything else better to do. How are you today? Thank you very much. I'm having cold feet. Literally, I need to find my slippers. And we are back. Oh, people in the chat, how are you guys doing? Ken Kenches? Is that how you say it? Thank you. Doing very fine. It's Friday. So, yeah, good. Doing good. Hope you are doing well as well. So, uh, yeah, where are you guys from? I think uh, I know Gavin, but uh... ah, ah, yes, all right. Oh, you're, you're from Asmogan's chat. That's that's great, man. He's a very nice guy. I love being on the podcast, and if I can, I will certainly return. Um, Oh, Cash is leaving or why? Well, hope you can stay and watch. So casual chit chat while we are waiting a little bit and then we will into painting up this very nice uh, armor truck for Gaslands. So this is going to be something a little bit different today. Uh, not Warhammer because, you know, I always do Warhammer, but uh, I'm going to be doing some Gaslands. If you don't know what Gaslands is, Gaslands is a wonderful small scale vehicular combat of the 21st century. Uh, yeah, post apocalyptic. So uh, I love this game. It's just basically Hot Wheels uh, cars converted. I love converting these. And just to, uh, just to show off, so today we are painting Rutherford, which is your uh, basic uh, Colonel Sanders uh, America, fuck yeah, uh, sponsor. So we are going to be going all US military style on this truck. And we're going to paint it up uh, as a pickup truck. I mean, sorry, we're going to use it as a pickup truck profile, but you can also use it uh, as a uh, heavy truck, but that costs a shit ton of points. As you can see, this was a, a uh, this was actually one of my first uh, real surprises because this this is resin, this is metal, but this is resin. Uh, Hot Wheels cars are usually made of metal, but uh, they are starting to go cheap. And uh, um, yeah, but they ask ask the same. Uh, money for it so it's the same price but it's made of resin so what the fuck uh, but this is made of metal uh, I spray painted it with uh, lead belcher and painted the wheels I glued the wheels so these are not moving because this is, these are for gas lands uh, the gas lands community is uh, kind of divided of what counts as a toy any so if you glue the wheels it, it does not count as a toy anymore uh, so 
mm, yeah, I just glue it for practicality because when I move the cars uh, according to the movement templates, um, you just bump it and it will just roll away. And that's why I glued them in. So um, hopefully when my son gets a little bit older, we can play and he will not be surprised why the little wheels on the cars are not moving. Let's just read up on the chat. What's going on? So yeah, uh, back to Gavin's uh, message. Hey, I saw you in Asmogan's chat. I'm trying to figure out which kill team between Slanesh or Nurgle or Eldar is the best for starters because I haven't played kill team before and I saw your name. Well, thank you very much, friend, for asking. Um, okay, uh, I suppose when you say Slanesh or Nurgle, oh my god, the birds are singing, please excuse me, if, it, it's, if it's really bothersome, just, uh, and we're lagging, if it's bothersome, just please tell me and I'll, I'll uh, just cover them up so that they will not chirp. So, it's like, uh, oh, okay, fine. They are called uh, the uh, Bard Estrils. They're very, very nice little birds. So um, the best starter kill team is definitely not Eldar. Uh, Slanesh, what do you mean? The demon Slanesh army or just Slanesh Mark of Chaos for Heretic Astartes? So what do, you, what do you mean by that one? Because right off the bat, what I see on the screen I would say uh, go with Nurgle, Plague Marines and Poxwalkers. That's one of the most beginner-friendly armies out there. Buy a box of Plague Marines and you need about six Poxwalkers and you're, you're good to go. You're good to go. Um, yeah, because, because the demons are very... Uh, it's, it's horror. It's kind of not horror spam. It's... Uh, Plague bearers, uh, I would say, I would say 40, 40 plague bearers and blood letters and 20% pink horrors. That's a pretty decent 125 point uh, demon list. Heretic Astartes suck ass. And, uh, and Nurgle, Nurgle's pretty good. They're slow, but uh, yeah, as soon as they get, the Marines get two wounds in the, in the next update, whenever that it will be there will be oh, op so yeah it's a brother doctor cackle hi what is up dude nice to see you guys here so yeah out of the three i mean if you if you are if you play the year i would say go and uh, go and play um eldar with aspect warriors and uh, banshees and everything, but uh, until that, just just uh, go with plague marines. Uh, one cleaver, uh, cleaver is combat, flail is zealot, and uh, and the plague launcher is either heavy or demo. And the rest uh, is, is its Plague Marine uh, leader with the uh, Plague Sword, so no Plasma, no, no Power Fist, just let's leave him, just, you have to leave him behind. And uh, maybe one more Bolter Marine, or one uh, more Gunner. Also, either some templates of Flamer Weapon, like uh, Plague Spewer or Plague Belcher, depending on what's, what's on the other side of the table. Because you can have two fighters, two gunners, and the rest of the points just spam the pox walkers, and and uh, you just run them up and right. Uh, how would you say? So yeah, right behind them, within two inches, uh, you run the melee marines so that you can uh, cloud of flies. So yeah, uh, play to go. I mean, Nurgle is the way to go. All right. I hope we are not losing too much broadband because I'm from Wi-Fi because I still do not have the correct setup, uh, the correct rig, but don't worry, it's not your fault. But if you would like to help the channel out, then I would suggest to visit patreon.com forward slash 
kill team hungry hungry because i have the wrong keyboard layout no tuck here we go yeah so it would be awesome if you could just uh share my channel and not uh subscribe to patreon by the way uh my patrons uh shiva mr grizzly uh skirmitar and who am i forgetting am i forgetting someone nope uh that's all the rest of the patrons are going to be in the credits at the end of the stream. Uh, Super Chats are active, so if you're feeling like in this whole COVID situation you have money to burn, then why not help me out with that? And uh, also, like, share, subscribe, and here we go. So, we are doing different paints now. So, these are actual um, Tamiya color, so these are Oh, here we go, sorry, didn't realize. So these are Tamiya color uh, military model paints. I love these because these are kind of, they are different smelling. So they're not water-based, they are acrylic. These uh, stick very well. We are going for a dark green uh, base coat and then highlight with olive green. And we have all our Citadel stuff lying here. So we're just gonna paint it up. Uh, the engine is going to be either gunmetal or where's my where's my uh, metallic paints? Whoops! One of my Eldar figurines just suicided. Yeah, they just jumped off from the cliff. Where is my metal paint? Anyway, we are just going to go with, ah, here it is, hiding behind the Blue Yeti. So we are going with uh, Vallejo Metal Color Steel. And oh my god, Kevin Isaac just donated 5 bucks 49 Very, very cool, my friend. You are absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I've never heard of Gaslands before. What's the combat and setting like? If you mind explaining it, because it sounds intriguing, also cool paints thank you well my friend uh snap a beer open and i will just uh, get talking so um just to just to see what kind of color scheme we are aiming for so this is my 1971 uh dodge charger if i'm not mistaken and um, this is the kind of military uh paint job i am uh planning for this truck. So it has two forward-facing miniguns, which are 4D6 a piece. And uh, I have, uh, yeah, drilled some holes for the gun hole, uh, the gunshot mark markings. And the, oh, thank you. Very good. Uh, this is, this is US military paint. So Rutherford, Rutherford is basically the uh the first sponsor that ever won the gaslands tournament uh, he went up to mars and uh, the dude is just basically the biggest um uh oil uh how would you say we say magnash in hungarian um he's basically an oil billionaire he is colonel sanders he is represented as Colonel Sanders from the KFC logo. He is basically Colonel Sanders. And he's just sponsoring everybody who wants to hook up with Rutherford with all the military gear. So he is basically the uh, the weapons distributor guy uh, on Earth from Mars, of course, because his office is on Mars. After he won the Gaslands race, he just migrated to Mars and he's just puffing on those Cuban cigars. The next one is a 19, uh, what is it? It's a 1957 Chevy. So this is with twin, I mean single, because uh, two build points. Uh, so I just got a little overzealous uh, with the flamers, but uh, a uh, flamer here, extra armor plating. 
and here on the driver's side, a little peeping hole uh, to actually see where the hell you're going. Uh, here's uh, some nice little uh, things like, uh, kiss my ass, and some kill counter. So yeah, we are aiming for the, this kind of color scheme. And of course, there are lots of sponsors uh, in Gaslands as well. Lots of other sponsors. For example, the Russian mad scientist Mishkin, who is uh, more like uh, more like uh, invention, is the mad scientist type, and not really the offensive type. Uh, he this is a uh, 2010 stock uh, Chevy Camaro. And I modified it so that uh, I cut off the plastic uh, intake valve. And this is a Tau, I think, teleport homer or something. It came with the stealth suits and these are just drone fins. And I made it so that this car has a uh, experimental teleporter. So it can just, it can just at the beginning of this activation, it can just, uh, yeah, teleport within medium range of its current position and then start the movement phase from there. So he's a runner. So he's not a fighter, he's a runner, but it's, it's pretty cool. And the auxiliary vehicle, so this is one team. We usually play at 50 cans. Uh, this is just a motorcycle. It's from the implementation, uh, what is it? Um, the, the implementation of Carnage? In, in, uh, I think the Implements of Carnage, yes. The Implements of Carnage uh, expansion sprues you can order from a web shop, not really know the name, but they will send you two full sprues of weapon upgrades and two motorcycles. I mean, it's a shit ton of stuff you get. Uh, these are also, so this is the sat nav and smoke launchers or grenade launchers or whatever. So uh, very, very cool, also um, glued in. And yeah, there are very many uh, game modes. And Death Race, uh, Zombie Hunt, where there are lots of zombies on the field and you just need to smack them with the car. Um, Gauntlet Run, so it, it, it's a very cool game. Uh, by the way, I'm just gonna start painting and then just yap about and tell you what's the game system like. So the game is called Gaslands Refueled. It's the second iteration of the game. So basically we can say it's the second edition of Gaslands. And uh, a gentleman named Mike Hutchinson uh, was the culprit. So he's basically responsible for this game. Lovely dude. He rolled me in, whew, and I can already feel the smell of this paint. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so he was kind enough to uh, invite me to the open closed, the open beta of his new game uh, of Gaslands. So we're just going to apply this as we go. Like this. And this is the, this is, yeah, this is the. We're not even going to dilute it that much. Junior is crying in the background. So hopefully mom got this covered. Hopefully. If not, I'll just disappear for a couple of seconds and then come back. So yeah, Mike Hutchinson. Um, the, the premise of the game is that after the, well, you know, the classic nuclear war on Earth, everything went to shit. And then... Uh, scavenging and such and such and blah 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 and uh, yeah people started racing so earth is a hellhole and on the desert wastelands people are racing these Mad Max style cars and you know there are sponsors and the winners get to Mars so just GTFO out of earth so they can go to Mars where life is absolutely fantastic. And of course, there are all sorts of hilarious scenarios you can play. And the best thing is that you need just need to buy. You don't need to buy like hundreds of dollars of, of miniatures and such like in Warhammer 
or War Machine, you just go to your local Toys R Us or your local whatever dollar shop. You pick up your one to 64 scale uh, cars. You modify them as you wish. Uh, you can glue the wheels and basically you are ready to go. The rule book is free to download from gaslands.com. The whole game is basically free. Dude made it available, Mike Hutchinson. You can just download it whenever and you can play. If you want to uh, like uh, sponsor the guy, then you can order the hardcover rulebook, Gas Lads Free Fueled, and you will have a wonderful copy of the rulebook in a physical form, but you will also get it via PDF. And if you play any kind of miniature games, then if you use Battle Scribe, well, guess what? You can build your teams on Battle Scribe as well. Uh, teams, uh, team plays. Oh shit! I'm I'm starting to get paint all over my finger, so I just need to smoothen this up. This dries pretty fast because it's acrylic. So yeah, um, games are. So there, there's a resource called cans, and just like in Warhammer, you have uh, 500 point games, thousand point games, such and such. Uh, Gaslands has that as well. Uh, it's called cans. So normally, a average beginner game is usually 50 cans, and you can have depends on what style you're playing. You can have about two vehicles or lots of motorbikes because motorcycles are like uh, five cans. So you can spam motorbikes as well, but they just have four hull. So they, they die pretty easily. And you can also have various amounts, various type of vehicles. For example, oh shit. For example, uh, no, no noon oil spill this time. Jesus Christ, that was humiliating last time. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, you can have multiple cars, multiple vehicles, or just you just uh, can like put all your eggs in one basket and do what I do right now. So this is a fifty can truck. And um, this has everything. All the perks. So they are perks. Driver perks. Uh, basically skills. You can just allocate. Because each sponsor has a specific uh, talent pool. It can select their um, special skills from. For example, Rutherford uh, is military and badass perks. I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, there are also sponsor-specific, for example, sub-faction rules, if you will, if you come from Warhammer. And Rutherford here says, so if you, if you know the movie Death Race, just, just that's the premise of the whole game. Death Race on a post-apocalyptic Earth. And... Rutherford is a sub-faction which says might is right and uh, televised carnage, I think, or something like that. Not really sure because I, I read the rule book uh, a long time ago. Anyway, uh, when Rutherford attacks in the attack step, because there are also steps just like in, in Warhammer or any skirmish game so when it attacks in the attack step and when you roll the dice if rutherford has six uncancelled hits it immediately gets an audience vote and so before even the opponent rolls to evade you just need to score six hits and then you boom you already get the audience vote so that's that's pretty cool an audience vote is basically an in in-game currency as well. You can spend, it's just like command points. You can spend it 
on various things. For example, removing hazard from yourself, because if you drive recklessly, you get hazard tokens. And if you have six hazards at the end of your activation, you can wipe out. So you can basically flip and then you're fucked. Um, each round starts in gear one. So we have gear phases, six gear phases, because there are six gears. And you can shift up or shift down gears, depending. Uh, you have so-called skid dice. And it's like six-sided dice, which you can... Do we have everything? Oh, yeah, here, here we go. So, which you can, like, roll, and then there are symbols on it. Then there is hazard, which is the one. Uh, basically, you just get a stress token. Uh, so... It will be like you're driving hazardously. That's the fail, basically. <laughs> if you roll a one, that's always bad here as well. And then there is a slide, spin, and the rest is shifts. And if you roll a shift, that means that shift is, is the good thing. That's what we want. If you roll shift, that's awesome because then you can shift gear up and with shift symbols, you can clear the bad things on your car. For example, you can uh, negate uh, hazards. And, uh, and yeah, with audience votes, it's like for two audience votes, you can just assign automatically, uh, it's called executive intervention, like in the, uh, in the Death Race movie, because somebody is always watching, because th this is televised. So everybody is watching Gaslands on the TV and nobody likes a clear winner. <laughs> so if you spend two audience vote, uh, audience votes, uh, you can automatically assign at the beginning of your round a target vehicle five hazard tokens. <laughs> so when they begin their turn, they are going to automatically start with five hazard tokens or if they have hazard tokens already, they will get five extra. And if you have six or more hazards, you need to clear those before the end of the turn or you're going to wipe out. So basically, you can just uh, ruin somebody's day with two audience votes. It's so cool. <laughs> and yeah, and uh, Rutherford, uh, we have weapons. So we are going to apply a turret-mounted missile launcher to this truck. And normally, this has three ammo so you can fire this three times rutherford whoops sorry rutherford here is the faction that it gives you an extra ammo so it's pretty cool um when you attack you use six-sided dice and four plus so four plus always hits uh, if you roll a six that's automatically two hits you can evade, but evasion only works if you roll a six. So the game wants you to die fast. So uh, yeah, and uh, of course there are, there's the Japanese drifter team, the Miyazaki team, who can have a perk saying that for each evade dice you roll, um, you can. So if when you roll evade, you can have as many stress tokens as you would like uh, to improve your evade roll. So you can basically evade on a 2+, plus because 1 is a, always a fail. So if you are like getting a barrage of like 125 millimeter guns, or the we have the BFG in this game, it's a 10d6 gun, and when you fire it, so basically the gun is like this, so here's the gun, and when you fire, the, and it can always, it must face forward. So when you fire the BFG, it automatically stops your car because of the recoil. It doesn't matter in which gear you're in. You, you go back to gear one and your motor stops. <laughs> That's so cool. So many freaking fun things in this, uh, in this game. So cool. So yeah, Dr. Dr. Cackill said that if I would make a Gaslands army, 
I'd go full motor mongol. And the good thing is, good sir, you can do that. You can do whatever the hell you want. I mean, almost, when it comes to gas lines. So, uh, I think we are kind of done with this. While the rest is drying, I'm going to go to the armor plating and just apply Vallejo gunmetal on it. Just like that. If we mess up, we can just come back and and just tidy up. Tidy up. Plus, Rutherford is easy to paint because if you mess up, you could just say that, oh, the paint just scratched and it's, it's a rugged vehicle. And that's it. Let's go a little bit precise. I'm bringing out my artificer. Let's just look at this. So yeah, it's D6 base, very, very cool. Uh, there are like kind of, are there overpowered things? Oh, sometimes, yes. I mean, the motorcycle team is hard to catch because motorcycles are very fast and and they're nimble. And in gear one, in the first gear, uh, they can pivot uh, 360. So they can, they can uh, automatically evade uh, body blocking vehicles who would like to uh, give them a hard time. Uh, at the starting line. So yeah, motorcycles are good. And I I have a Judge Dread motorcycle as well. I'm I think I I showed you guys last time. It's 3D printed. One of my patrons, uh, Valiant, printed it for me. It's my one of my best models I ever painted for Gaslands. <laughs> All shall face the mighty Ningen. <laughs> oh, you can do that. You can totally do that. You can paint it up. And and yeah. Uh, but if you want really good quality motorcycles, I would recommend the, the Implements of Carnage upgrade sprue. Uh, they have this engine block as well. Uh, they have multiple engine blocks, exhaust, pipes, Machine guns, MG forty twos, everything. Oh well, and I've got ridden the uh, the windows, and I put this mesh on it, and basically, uh, it's this. So if you go to your utility store or whatever, you can have this. Uh, what's it called? You put flour in it or powdered sugar. It's called Sita, Hungarian, and also in Russian, as I've heard. By the way, if any Russian viewers are, oh, stream is falling apart. I'll just get this mesh out of here, it's screwing with the camera. Okay. So if there's any Russian viewers out there, then Dobry vecher, tavarishi. And if there are any German viewers, then uh, guten Abend. Ich hoffe, dass euch ein uh, gutes Wochenende haben werden. Und alles gut wünsche ich euch. És természetesen, hogyha van magyar néző, akkor sziasztok estét egy uh, Rutherford pickup truckot festet. Éppen pickup truck profillal játszható trackot fogok festeni. 360 fokban lövő rakéta vetővel a tetején. So don't worry, I was not possessed by any kind of demons. This is just my native language. So don't call the Inquisition. Please, 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 don't call the Inquisition. By the way, Kromlech, uh, the Polish... Uh, third-party miniature company just hit me up today. Uh, they are wondering where's my uh, Space Wolves uh, review video. Uh, it's coming. Probably I'm going to finish it up on Sunday uh, because they, they are sponsoring me and they want to see it. 
because they sent me stuff and I'm very sorry man but having a child plus a new job it's like it's Asphogon what ten dollars oh my god dude you do not have to do this thank you very very much what is up with you ah the old plastic egg carton paint palette tool try that in true classic <laughs> yeah these are quail egg uh holders or containers quail egg uh is tiny and yeah it's pretty pretty good how are you doing man we are painting uh a gaslands truck with 360 missile launcher on its top. We are painting, uh, I would say, World War II US Army theme. And the sponsor is going to be Rutherford for this team. And, uh, and yeah, thank you very much for joining the stream. Thank you very much for your donation, friend. This helps out the channel a lot. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so let's just paint up the grill. So yeah, and usually uh, the most popular uh, form of game. So here's also like uh, you roll d6 and you just uh, select the scenario. But usually we play um, Death Race, the classic Death Race with three gates and we line up. There is an initiative phase just as long as the other. So there are, there are lots of uh, interesting elements. Um, you would also find in other games as well. And there is a pole position token and whoever has the pole position is usually the first player to go in that gear phase. And then it's just, you're just off and uh, no weapons are active until the first gate. So you, you just need to position yourself in a way and just get to the first gate as fast as possible. And after you reach the first gate, uh, the other players, the, the next player, to your left gets the pole position. He will be the active player. And those who did not go through the gate first will get a audience vote on a five plus because there's a catch up mechanic so that they can catch up to you. But uh, motorcycles on the other hand, they are very hard to catch. But if you catch them, man, you just like, you shoot them once or twice and they blow up because they just have uh, four hull points. So what is up? Can't stay too long, but I'm all right. Looks fine. Fun paint project there. Yes, it is. It's my third member of my Rutherford uh, team for Gaslands. Um, oh, there's an armor painting as well. Uh, armor plating, sorry. So you have 50 cans to spend. You can either spend that on, I mean, this is just a recommended sized battle. You can deviate from it as you wish. And Mike Hutchinson, the uh, designer of the game, also tells you that, you know, just have fun and do what you want. And the most fun rule is if you don't know how to resolve a situation, act so that it would cause the most carnage. <laughs> It's like the, the take, uh, resolve the situation and, and, and apply rules so that it would make the most destruction. <laughs> I mean, man, not like your uh, W, if you don't know how to resolve the rule, uh, we're not going to tell you. Uh, just roll a uh, d6 and on, on a four plus, uh, one of y'all is going to have his way. <laughs> Fuck that. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you for the recommendation, by the way, because Gavin uh, arrived uh, after he saw me on uh, Asmo's stream. Thank you for the rec. You know, word of mouth, word of mouth is the, is the most 
effective way to grow on YouTube nowadays, at least. I mean, likes and subs also help, but you know. And this is something called a tombstone. Uh, there, there is a role, a rule for tombstones as well, uh, but for another sponsor on Rutherford, it's just you know a a decorative element. They just took a five hundred kilogram uh, steel slab and just welded onto the ass of this truck. <laughs> you can see the. Uh, the cannon holes and all sorts of high caliber holes are trying to penetrate it, but yeah, you know, it's Rutherford. And yeah, and, and Rutherford is so badass that uh, the faction rule does not allow you to uh, take uh, light vehicles <laughs> because, like, might is right. Actually, the rule uh, it has the name might is right, so. Yeah, Rutherford is badass. And it's very, very beginner friendly. It's like the corn of Gaslands. So you guys want to hear of the other sponsors as well? It's like, it's pretty, pretty dope. I mean, Mike Hutchinson has a pretty rich fantasy now. So many sponsors. And you can, this is an, and you can escalate the game. So if you want to bring in uh, new players, you can just add on things gradually, so you don't need to play with sponsors. There are basic rules, there are advanced rules, and uh, once you get the basic rules, then you can add on advanced weapons, advanced gear, uh, you can bring in sponsors. It's pretty cool. And it's like, it's cheap as hell. Uh, the, as, as I mentioned, the rules are for free, so you don't have to pay for the rules it's continuously patched and uh, and faq'd there's not much to faq though because the system is pretty good and it has a uh, faq form as well where they they answer questions and there's also a gaslands facebook uh, group with uh, i think over over 17,000 members and they all sh and and the reddit group man the reddit group is just absolutely sick there's so many cool uh, conversions and and everything laying about there are so sick ideas out there i just bought a 1998 subaru impreza uh, car and I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, a Hot Wheels, not a real one, of course. <laughs> I don't even have money for a, a rig. Oh, by the way, thank you very much for my patrons. On Patreon, I just got my first ever paycheck from Patreon, so 25 bucks. I only got 975 to go to reach my Patreon goal, but hey. A thousand mile journey begins with the first step. Isn't that right? So let's have a look at the chat real quick. And I'm going to get a sip of a water in the meantime. So is the Space Marine represented accurately in the Astartes um, animation? Siama Pedersen's animation, you mean? Absolutely. Fuck yeah, sir. That is the most accurate representation to date of how a space marine should uh, act like. Yes, I would say I have not seen better animated space marine in my life. Holy shit, we have 3% left. Shit, 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 shit. Oh my god, 3%? Oh no 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 Whew That was an absolutely close call No data transfer please Oh yeah So where was I Uh yeah so yeah Astartes Space Marine Yes 
absolutely well represented. Everything else is like lackluster from from now on. I mean, from that time on. It's like, yeah, 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 okay, but but Astartes, man. Astartes is the shit. And uh, I'm I'm really waiting for that Custodes animation. What Siyama is working on. Because I love Custodes. I just got a uh, Custodes Warden uh, miniature in the mail today. Because my next project, which I'm probably going to live stream. Pro uh, I mean, if uh, you didn't see already or didn't hear already, these are my uh, Bard Astrild little birds. They have pretty, pretty loud mouths and they think their voice is pretty good. So they uh, like to advertise themselves. If you have any sorts of problems with that, just uh, tell me in the chat and I will throw a towel over the cage because the, the kitchen light uh, confuses them. And they think it's still the day. Um, so yeah, a star days, man. Oh. Kind of wish GW just left that guy alone. By the way, he commented on my channel once when I painted up uh, the Retributor Marines and posted it in my community page. I was absolutely stoked. Siyama Pedersen just came to my channel and just commented on my channel. I was like, what? I am not worthy. Oh yeah, so, Warlord Class Titan, welcome in the chat. As closely as any video has ever showcased, still not 100% though. Well, yeah, I would say it's, it's the top thing. Dexter, hello, welcome, uh, a, a late welcome to you, good sir. Uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a Hot Wheels armored vehicle, it's not a Tower Rocks. But, uh, yeah, almost, almost. Let's just put another quick layer of steel on this. So anybody who's Hungarian, because I, I posted this uh, in the Hungarian Gaslands group as well. Welcome to the channel. Sziasztok, jó estét kívánok nektek. Remélem, mindenki jól van. So, yeah. So, yeah. Castorius, uh, and I also want to know what future projects he could be planning. Uh, like, maybe Grey Knights or Mechanicus. Mechanicus. Uh, I know that, I mean, he spoiled it in his farewell letter, basically, that he is working on Castorius. And... Oh yeah, back to the Mike Um uh, I am going to make an honor project to to honor Siyama Peterson yet again, and I'm gonna do a uh, double sentinel bladed shield captain for my kill team, and he's going to uh, wear his shield on his back, and of course I'm going to make him a. Uh... Oh my God. What's the name? Shadowkeeper. Yes, of course, because I hate painting gold. So he's going to be he's going to be black with some gold trimmings. So he's going to be a shadowkeeper, and man, is he going to be fucking badass? Oh, by the way, um, my Custodes short story with a Vox in the Void has just hit eight thousand views. And if you look at that channel, nothing comes even close. So I am uh, registering that as a success. If you haven't checked out that channel, please go to A Vox in the Void, 40k fan narration. And he also narrates uh, Warhammer Fantasy as well. And, uh, and Cthulhu, what is it called? What's, who's the author? I always forget uh, what's the, what's the Cthulhu author. I, I'm sure you guys know. It's I just I just don't have it right now. Um, I used to know it. Oh my god! It's the end. It's the end of the day. My brain isn't working. 
Uh, oh my god, it's a shame. Lovecraft! Jesus Christ. There you go. Brain started working again. It's Lovecraft. So he, he narrates Lovecraft as well. He had, he's a pretty under underrated channel. He deserves far more attention than he gets. He is over 1,000 subs now, so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, he just needs the 4,000 hour watch time. So please help the dude out. Go and watch his videos. The Girl on the Black Ship uh, narration is very good. Uh, Vanguard, a Horus Heresy narration, is also pretty good. It basically describes the first seven minutes of the uh, of the drop site massacre from point of view of a marine who just barely survived. Fantastic stuff, and his voice is awesome. Glad you uh, dropped in, Gavin. Uh, hope to see you next time as well, and thank you very much for your donation, friend. Have a wonderful day. Okie doke. I would say, I would say, I would say. All right. For those of you who are watching, I am going to put it up to a vote. Because I cannot decide. Oh, you're in Georgia, friend. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you guys. I hope to see you next time. This will be recorded, so you can just come back uh, whenever you feel like it. So uh, have a good night. The Emperor protects. So, what would you guys think? Should the missile launcher go here to the backside or right above the cockpit? So, I don't know. Well, what do you guys think? Here or here? I don't know. It looks kind of better here, I would say. Hmm. Right above the cockpit. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because like this is already pre-painted. I, I got this off of my Batmobile, which I converted because like it's a car. So I don't know. But here, I mean, it's it kind of looks more well balanced. And it looks like a hatch. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. Yeah, okay, cockpit it is. Good. It's gonna really quickly paint the this the window mesh. Just gonna slot up, 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 up. Just to have some steel on it and I'm gonna come back and clean up with the the green and we also have another green layer to go that green layer is going to be the highlight it's like not a, not a big deal if we just mess around here a little bit because you know it's it's battle damage Nathan with the simp money, oh my god, thank you, thank you guys for the support. Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Okay, I think we have it. I think it's good. <laughs> Just gonna blow out, blow out the bubbles. All right, good. Now we're just gonna gonna go and clean up. It's a good thing about this this paint. This I think it's Japanese uh, model paint that you don't need to dilute it. You can just apply it immediately, and it dries really quickly. 
just cover up my mistakes. Although they're not mistakes because I will probably dry brush this anyway. Uh, oh, there are the, the other things. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you. So cool. By the way, Asmo, uh, when you have a podcast next time, uh, if you need an extra helping hand, just uh, hit me up. I'm happy to oblige. So yeah, hobby life is not looking good in Hungary, unfortunately, because of this whole post-COVID thingy. Everybody is asking for vaccination IDs. They don't even let you go into the clubs without a vaccination ID. Because here it's like, it is idiotic in a way. And I'm sorry if I trigger somebody, if somebody is, I, I'm not anti-vax. I just, uh, I just like to have a fair, uh, I just like to have it fair for everyone. But uh, right now it's so that if you want to go grab like a meal, if the place has a terrace where you can sit outside under the sun, you can go without a mask, without a vaccination ID, without anything. If you would like to dine inside, then it's a papiere bitte, as the German Gestapo would say. I mean, yeah, as Mo, I thought um, as a uh, as a guest. I mean, if you would have me, of course, I would. I would love to come uh, sometime and just have a chat about everything. Last time was awesome. I was a kind of newbie. I didn't want to talk that much. Plus, the the questions were pretty pretty good, so I, I needed to think a lot about it. But yeah, um, yeah, if you would like to, uh, I'm up for a podcast. So yeah, um, so I'm, I'm not overall happy because my place, well, oh, too, too diluted, it's too diluted. I would need some kind of a absorbent. Oh, well, I'll just, and nobody saw anything. So yeah, there's a place where I go for five years now, five years, and I am the kill team guru basically in my country. Um, I thought there for a year, I thought people, I was teaching people how to play Kill Team for a year. Every Wednesday I was there for a year. I barely missed a Wednesday to get people into Kill Team. And it's like, um, the tournament, the Kill Team tournaments, would, uh, the real-life Kill Team tournaments, because fuck uh, uh, Tabletop Simulator, man. Um, it would have be they would have began in May, so this month, end of May. They say that, well, um, and I said, okay, uh, I'm the organizer, what, what's, what's it going to be? They said, well, um, you will need a vaccination ID. And I was like, what? So I, I, I don't have one. Well, so then get vaccinated. I'm, I'm not getting vaccinated. I'm, I'm healthy. Well, then there, there's, uh, you cannot come in. So that there's not going to be any IDs. Uh, sorry, uh, any, any tournament. And I was like, what? I was the tournament organizer for like two years now. I was like, well, nope. I was like, I'll go and get tested. If you have antibodies, you will get the, the vaccination ID anyway. It's like, I'm not gonna do anything about that, you fascist. I am definitely not going to play your game. So uh, yeah, after five years, I told them to go to hell. It's sad because other people, other players, because here in Hungary, everybody's at each other's throats. That's literally. Um, they are like, um, people don't like me. And I said, well, I'm going to organize a, organize a tournament. And they're going to ask for vaccination IDs. And guess who's not going to those tournaments? Although this is my main game and I would like to win those tournaments. That's a bummer. Hold on a second.
just uh, got myself a napkin. Because now it's dry, brushy, brushy time. Next Thursday. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, yeah, because your, your podcast is on Thursdays. Right. Got it. So now we're going with olive green. And we're just going to dry brush. Which means that we need to get most of the paint off of the brush. And we're just going to go like that. Problem is that this is this is a acryl, so it dries super fast. We're just gonna go a little bit. A little. And let me just okay. This was with dark green, and now we're going with olive green. And then I'm gonna have a look at the chat. Am I losing my mind? Is this the same paint? <laughs> nah, it's 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 a different one. Oh, thank. <laughs> Yeah, it's this different one. Okay, I'm, I'm still sane. Okay, just, you know, just here and there. It's going to be fine. Okay, so we need to we need to resolve this dry brush thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put olive green here. Quickly dry it off my brush and I'm going to put Corvus, Corax white on it so it can be a little bit diluted. Oh my, too much, too much, too much. Maybe going back a little bit. All right, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Just the dip. Okay, I think it's I think it's right. And now comes the dry brush. The dry brush brush. Brush. Okay. So here goes nothing. Oh, cool. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. You might not see it now, but... Little, little highlights here. It's basically the, the, the beggar's edge highlight, if you don't want to mess around too much with edge highlighting. Although with this acro paint, it's, it's pretty hard because it dries so fast. I'm just gonna put it's not even edge highlight, I'm just gonna put it here and there because we're just gonna null oil all over it anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah, I need I need new brushes. Whoops, sorry. I'm gonna need new brushes. Yep, it's getting lighter. Lighter and brighter. It's resin, it's not even metal. I'll just go back a little bit. A degree. Perfect. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Alrighty, so Ren is going to. All right, so brother, oh man, he's a guru. Ha ha ha! From long way the gurus. Like I responded to you know, sorry, vaccination should still remain a choice, but be respectful, still wearing a mask and sanitizing your hands is not what person should be doing. I I even I would even agree to that of course because you know um, whoops hobbyists have a well, i would say a negative stereotype against them that they don't bathe they have very bad body odor and they don't know what's a do is or deodorant so that's a problem but uh, yeah you should definitely wash your hands and do the bare minimum it's not even a question I would say so yeah because like here in this country they say that well okay it's like uh, vaccination is not mandatory so enjoy your life of isolation because you cannot do jack shit without that I can't even take my child to the zoo without a without a vaccination ID I cannot uh, grab a coffee inside the coffee shop and drink it there uh, without without an ID. We just went to a restaurant just yesterday with my wife and my son, and it was cold. It was it was in the night, and we had the baby carriage. And I mean, he was, uh, of course, uh, had very nice warm clothing plus the baby carriage and everything. It's pretty pretty good in terms of uh, adapting to the weather conditions. And they said that, well, uh, do you have the ID? And I was like, no, we don't. Well, then uh, you can sit outside. And it was like, what? Not that hot. So it wasn't air conditioned. So we had to sit there with coats with the baby carriage. So we weren't allowed in to dine just because we don't have a vaccination ID. Although we could sit outside without a mask and people were not keeping the distance and anything so it's like bullshit this whole thing is bullshit and this is why i said i am not playing into fascists uh hands so i'm not gonna play their game so fuck them uh is this the windshield nope i don't think it is so I'm not gonna paint it. Okay, so basically we have that done. Let's just uh, take the glue and glue the uh, turret. I hope the glue is here somewhere because if not, it's gonna be a problem. Ah, here's the glue. So, uh, question about your language. Do you call the sea Tenger or something or something? Exactly, that is Tenger. Uh, exactly what you said. Sea is Tenger in Hungarian. Ocean is Ocean. Uh, the lake is To. 
uh, the river is for you and all sorts of all sorts of things but Tenger is definitely what we call the sea so I'm just gonna do an atrocious thing and I'm gonna glue onto already painted surface which will of course result in uh, the area being white because of the glue so eventually I will have to paint over it uh, should I do that right now? I should probably do the bolts first, which I'm going to do with Vallejo Steel. And what do you call the sea? Oosh! Anyway, good sir. Step is for linguistics. I love it. <laughs> All right, this is going to be like tedious. I'm just going to put a small dot on every bolt here. So if you feel like getting a drink or something, yeah, you can just do it. This is going to take a couple of minutes. Have it. Hmm. Interesting. I know Russians call it Moria. The Germans call it Meer. Uh, we call it Tenger. Oh, I, I, I always forget to include some 40k uh, stuff in Hungarian. So what do we, what do we call 40k stuff in Hungarian? It was like uh, the Hungarian 40k word of the day. I always forget to include it at the end of my videos. But the, we have some pretty crazy stuff. What we call things in Hungarian word of 40k. It's like, if you want to hear something uh, crazy, then I can just give you a couple of examples. It's going to be hilarious. Like most of the time, I'm, I'm really against Hungarian uh, translations of the 40k novels. Because everything sounds extremely stupid in Hungarian extremely stupid like for example uh, space marine is urgardista os urgardista Oz is the basically the pronoun. <laughs> the the emperor is called uh, the god emperor is the Ishten Chasar. Oh shit! I just made a I just made a boo boo. Anyway, I'm gonna just gonna clean this up eventually. Space walls are called Urfarkosok. Yes, yeah, like and the Space Marines is Urgardishta. And the guardsman, the simple guardsman is called Gardishta. What? <laughs> it's so stupid. Anyway, thank you guys for the super chats. 
You guys were awesome. Thank you. Helps a lot. All right, that's that's for nuts and bolts. Gonna do a little bit of a highlight on the engine block. Just a little bit of a highlight. Do a little bit of a highlight here on the steel net as well. And now a small bit of dry brushy brushy with the steel over the gun metal. Do I have my Dirty little paws or fingerprints on the, the green. Nope. That's fine. And we're going to quickly clean this up like nothing happened. Great. So I have some military decals somewhere, but... Uh, but I'm not going to apply it. Now I'm going to freehand. I'm going to freehand it. That's for sure. Um, not sure of what to do with the reflectors. Anyway, time to time to glue on the, the turret. So again, just a little bit of little bit of a blue. I'm going to have to repaint some of the stuff here anyway because of the 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 glue is going to oxidate because i think it's it's just the way it is it's going to be forward facing i think it's okay i think so uh, need more glue Fortunately. And it's already starting, you see? It's already starting. The glue is eating away the paint. So let's just have that like this. And keep it in place. And now we wait. We can blow it. And this is going to be a 360 turret and it can fire 360 everywhere, which is good because the trick of this build, if you're wondering, is that whenever I will reach the second gate, my weapons are going to activate and I can fire 360. Oh yeah, you see it right. It's a Tau missile pod and some implements of carnage uh, missiles put on it and this is a uh, dreadnought uh, arm piece as well <laughs> uh, i think the dreadnought's hand just grab all your all your bits and just mash them together it's gonna be fun so yeah, um, so you go, you activate your weapons and it, uh, after gate, after reaching gate one. And basically what you do is like, this is 360. Uh, it can fire the maximum range, so long range. And you roll six D6s. So it has basically four ammos and shoots six times. And this has the loader skill on it. So one crew member of the truck is deducted from the entire 
uh, crew members for that attack phase. So plus one to hit. I'm hitting on three pluses. This has uh, Dead Eye. So on long range, but not in medium range, I get plus one to hit. So I'm hitting on twos. And it has Headshot on it, which means that sixes are critical hits. They don't score two. They score three hits automatically. And <laughs> thank you again, Nathan. You're too kind, man. <laughs> thank you. Um, so <laughs> because heresy comes from all angles. <laughs> well, basically, if you see, it's uh, yeah, Imperium is like besieged from everywhere. Um, where was I? Oh, yes. So on I was like throwing dice randomly and I and I got like well over six hits, sometimes 12 hits as well. And each time I score six hits or more hits, six or more hits, I get a audience vote. And this uh, truck has something called rapid fire on it. So on a in a battle in a battle round which is six gear phases it can fire twice uh, so every six rounds uh it can fire twice once so with rapid fire so i can just get all the audience votes i i want with this and two audience with two audience votes i can reload so i can go back to to having ammo again Plus there is ramming as well. So it's like all the fun, man. Gaslands is a very, very good uh, alternative uh, small scale skirmish game. If you are like tired of Warhammer or something, just buy some Hot Wheels or Matchbox. The, the thing is that it has to be one, one to 64 scale. And we'll be good. Okay, Doki, I think, I think this is good. Um, let's just reinforce. <laughs> yeah, Heretic Pride, Galaxy Wide. <laughs> we call it Heretic uh, Eretnek. Budosh Eretnek. Heretic Scum. <laughs> Fucking heretics. Okay. This went much better than expected. Well, let's 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 try it. Let's fit it. Let's try a fit. Cool. Very, very cool. Looking good. Looking good. So, I would say... Uh, okay, some military slogans. I'm gonna freehand. Um, what should we what should we put what should we put on the hood some some one 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 word um mm, i'm out of ideas what should it be i mean i'm gonna go with a military standard military star here up oh, gonna need more water i'm, I'm looking for catchphrases so you can suggest whatever I want. You, you, you can suggest whatever you want, and I will try to paint it on the on the vehicle. So go crazy in the chat. Just uh, let it be something military. Okay, keep it keep it military. Okay, let's let's just keep it. Uh. 
just going to clean it up afterwards. I'm not mistaken, it's like something like this. And it goes something like this. Whoops, almost dipped it in the wrong, the wrong paint. Okay, so. Whoop, two viscos, it's not good. Too much water, too much water. Sorry, I'm not talking. I'm concentrating like hell. This. Why is it? Why is it this viscose? Come on. Just gonna neaten it up a bit. Maybe I should go with dark. No, olive green is good. Sheriff star. I don't care. It's like it's good enough for me. Uh, it still didn't dry. Do we care? Nope. Nope, we don't. A little bit wider. Probably. Can be a little bit taller. So these should be as well. Ah, that looks stupid. Thank you for sticking around this long. I'm gonna finish up the stream in a bit because we are nearing the end of this painting session. We're just gonna not do the obligatory um, new and oil spell this time.
I hope. No spilling of noon oil shall be practiced today. Yeah, pretty good military star, if I say so myself. So, um, what should go on the hood? Um, I'm really out of ideas. <laughs> So, like what? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, hmm. What do they usually ride on, on military vehicles like these? Oh, okay, I got, I got something. It's gonna be a longer one, but let's see. It's gonna be like... Oh shit. <laughs> I <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna improvise. <laughs> Dead meat. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this is the best I could come up with. Um, and here on the front, it's going to be like... I don't know. Uh, anyway, this is this is just for now. I, I I'm completely ran out of ideas. Okay, um, finishing up. Just putting a little bit of gold on this rotary base here. Yep, just to have it distinguished. What should be with this cable? What should, oh no, oh please no. Oh no, 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 I got some gold on it, shit. Oh, okay, thank God. Okay, and probably these should be yellow. Flash get yellow, man. One of my favorite yellows. 
too bad it's a layer paint so it, it needs it needs multiple layers to cover so it doesn't it doesn't hurt to add some water to it Astrals are added again. Okay. All right, the mind lights. Headlights already. Gonna clean it up a little bit with steel. That cleanup went too good, so I need to go back now with the yellow. A little back and forth with the yellow and the steel. Is this my artificer? It is my artificer. Okay, I'm just gonna put some paint here. Yeah, I'm painting thousand suns. Well, that's a chore because each and every stripe on their helmet needs to be, every second stripe needs to be yellow. They are like microscopic. Oh my gosh, shit. You guys still with us? All right, call the headlights done. And now comes the funny part again. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> oh no. It's that time again. It's that time again, friends. It's that time again for the new oil to be spilled. All right, here we go. Look at that. Comes to life, doesn't it? Careful. Careful. And now watch this. Ooh. Ooh, looking good. Um, yeah, about that. Well, used to be Catholic. But I'm like, a, I don't know. It's like, it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to take a stand, actually, because I don't know. Um, I would like to answer that question with the answer 
of Jordan Peterson that I don't necessarily think there is God, but I I would like I I like to behave as if he was there. So yeah. I would I would say. So as if he was watching. And people should behave like as he was watching because there are a lot of fucked up shit happening in the world, man, and people would really need to get their shit together. I mean, I don't take away all the all the credits of religion because I, I really like the last church uh, novel and the whole back and forth what the emperor and uh, Uriah have with the uh, religion and the question of religion. Um, yeah, I wouldn't I I mean, my wife is is uh, Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, so she showed me the better side of life with with like getting me out of the moral gutter that I was in when we met. I was living the typical life of a of a single dude, and it's like no, I I owe a lot to my wife. And she was inspired by uh, her religion, so I, I I credit it, and I do not take away anything from that. I mean, as long as it's peaceful, and it's not the you know not the uh, head chopping type, I I don't really care, and we can all live in peace, and we can all just share moral values and be be good people. As soon as you start forcing people, now that's a different question, right? As soon as you say, okay, you must believe this or your head comes off. And I would say, F you, man. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. the The whole history uh, is very interesting. Uh oh, almost did the same mistake again. Because my wife told that uh, back in the day, the whole the whole Christian religion it was one, so they had they had this whole thing unified, and then somewhere in the eleventh century. Maybe they had some kind of dispute about the Holy Spirit of how it is, how it should be interpreted in the religious scripture. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, if I recall the story correctly, and then the, the whole Byzantine Christian uh, unity just went to shit, and Byzantine remained the orthodox that's why they call themselves the orthodox because they consider themselves uh i mean as far as history goes they are the og christians and catholics uh went to rome after the fall of byzantine uh byzantine oh my god if I, am i just talking nonsense um the the eastern the uh, i think the turkish empire just took it over uh that that one fell and they were excluded there and rome was founded and the catholic catholicism started basically yeah and and anyway they they just call catholics heretics <laughs> which is absolutely funny and catholics call protestants heretics so everybody's a heretic. <laughs> that 
That's so cool. But anyway, I, I always make fun of uh, these religious converts who find me on the street, uh, these uh, Jehovah Witnesses. It's so funny. They start preaching to me and they start uh, like trying to convince me or start, try to uh, start the conversation like, and uh, do you believe in God? I was like, uh, which one? I was like, well, uh, you know, I was like, uh, excuse me, so I believe in the God Emperor. And what you are saying is heresy. So have a good day. <laughs> and they are just like standing there and <laughs> looking out of their faces. And it's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> yeah, my wife likes to troll them as well. Like, yeah, the Mormons, the Mormons are the other, the other group. Oh my God. The Mormons, they're all, all like nicely dressed and everything. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm not making fun of them. Shouldn't make fun of them. Unless they are hostilely trying to take over some culture, some Western culture. So they would rather just conquer and not adapt because from the from where they are coming from it's not that good the living conditions are not that good but they come and they do not integrate and everybody's pikachu faced when they say that excuse me cutting off people's heads in the middle of france in paris just because somebody made a cartoon about someone is objectionable and it's like, what? Now that I have a problem with. All right, just one more thing, one more thing, and no noon oil uh, spills today, ladies and gentlemen. My skills are definitely improving. No noon oil spills. How about that? You don't need to donate money. Because last time I, I could buy, I can buy a new noodle oil because of your generosity. Because last time I was an asshole and just spilled it all over. There's a short video on it in, on YouTube. If you would like to laugh, just please check it out. Check that out. All right. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's time to give my son a bath before he goes to sleep. And we have finished up in about roughly one hour and 50 minutes from base coat to a finished wash. And I'm just gonna do some really, really minor things after it, put some battle damage on, uh, redo the headlights a little bit, do some extra uh, here and there's, but we have completed our third Rutherford vehicle. Let's just put up everybody here. The 1971 Dodge Charger, the 1957 Chevrolet with flamethrowers, and now the armored truck with rotating uh, 360 missile launchers on the top plus armor plating. Very good. What is that? What is that? Oh, does it come on? Will it come off? Should it come off? I think it should. Should it be dust? Yeah, I will probably probably put some dust on it. Okay, so we can wait a little bit. We can blow on it. And then, ta-da! 
Tamiya Witherine Master. What? Sorry. <laughs> Weathering Master, my apologies. So it might look, look like a makeup kit, but in fact, it's not. This is rust. This is darker steel, and this is steel highlight. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make sure the whole oil is closed. There you go. Okay, and we'll just start blowing. That's what she said. Oh, you see? They are very nice pigments. What I'm gonna do is, and watch closely now. We, it's rust. And what is that? What is that there? Is it? It's gold. Oh shit! It's gold. Need to take care of that. So anyway, I'm just gonna spoil it for you. It's gonna look like. It's gonna look like this. The dust of the road, the rust, and well, I don't know. It should probably go, probably go here as well. Oh yeah. And coming on to the other side, it's just gonna be like this. Whoops. Like this. I'm gonna do some more on the top. We're just gonna let some stuff dry here. And I'm definitely, definitely going to do some here over, over the star, just to give it that nice rugged look on the wheels as well. Gonna quickly take a take care of that. Good. Uh oh. So. Quickly, quickly take care of that little gold spot because I'm definitely gonna lose sleep over it. Oh, no, it's good. No, it's good. All right, now we're just going to. Hey, Gavin. Nice to have you back. We're just finishing up weathering the truck. And hopefully, we're just gonna put some nice steel on it. Mmm, spicy. Give it some steel finish. This is a very good Japanese uh, weathering kit. steel on the engine block as well too much steel on the hood so we will have to give it some let's let's just put some steel here on the bottom on the top as well Give some a little bit of steel highlight on the missiles. I'm just gonna uh, re redo the coloring of the missile heads. The red one. So 
give it a nice edge highlight. Look at that beautiful, beautiful edge highlight. It's awesome. It's awesome. There, there, here, a little bit of here. Eh, you can just go crazy with this. Go crazy because, you know, this is Gaslands. Just here and there, and we're gonna go backtrack a little bit with like this. Just give it a rusty look. Just a little here and there. Good, and redo the missile head just to have it nice, nice and clean and fresh. the suspense <laughs> will I fuck up or not it's always the question hopefully not Alrighty guys, 
to our mark. Time to finish the stream. Thank you, thank you very much for sticking around this long. And of course, for all your generous, generous donations. Um, here is the finished product. I think it's pretty good. Whoop, there goes my, my thing. Just gonna do a single pixel correction. Hopefully, it's gonna be fine. There, it's fine. Now it's fine, now it's finished. So here you have it, a 50 can heavy truck profiled Rutherford, sorry, no, a 50 can pickup truck profiled uh, Rutherford armored truck. Um, basically, this is a single car list in Gaslands. It, it hits on a two plus and it gets audience votes basically every time it hits. Max gear is four. It has, I think, 16 health points. And uh, yeah, if you want to go and uh, and try out Gaslands with one vehicle, then I would suggest something like this. It has a 360 uh, missile a launcher on it. It can fire on in every angle and uh, it's sturdy enough. It's heavy, it's a heavy vehicle. So when it collides with someone, it gets uh, at least plus two attack dice. So this is the brand new uh, addition to my Rutherford family here. And I'm just gonna detach the camera to show you guys. And basically this is it. And thank you very much for sticking around for this long. Thank you very much for your uh, super chats. And please uh, check out the uh, channel as well. And I hope this stream is not gonna fall apart. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, don't forget to check out Patreon, patreon.com forward slash kill team hungry. Uh, shout out to my patrons, uh, Shiva, Mr. Grizzly, uh, Skimitar, Sci-Fi Law, and uh, Balint Gashpar, who is a big Gaslands fan. So have a great night, everybody, and see you guys uh, next time.